Hello my friends, in today's video we will take a look at Surrey Saturn 50mm T2.9 1.6x anamorphic lens. Surrey Saturn series is probably the most representative case of democratization of anamorphic lenses in the past couple of years. Besides being relatively affordable, they are also very compact, which means that they are very manageable even for small productions. In this video, we will take a look at how the 50mm version works specifically in combination with Panasonic S5 II or S5 II X. The focal length of this lens is 50mm, but keep in mind that the footage is 1.6x horizontally squeezed. That means that you are getting a horizontal field of view that you would get with about 31mm conventional lens. I basically treat it as a 31mm wide-angle lens. It is suitable for wide opening shots, documentary filmmaking, landscapes, architecture, or as a more immersive alternative to 50mm lens for narrative stuff. With 1.6x squeeze ratio, you are getting a fairly pronounced anamorphic effect and aspect ratio of 2.84 to 1 or 2.4 to 1 with open gate. Just like any other anamorphic lens, it is a specific piece of kit that offers a unique look, but you need to know what you are doing, at least to a certain extent. A huge talking and selling point of the Saturn series is the size. 50mm version is just 10.7cm long and it weighs 457 grams in the L-mount version. That is less than half in comparison to 50mm Venus and without spoiling this review too much, I will say that there aren't really any compromises associated with that incredible weight loss. Mounted on the S5 II, it is very well balanced and there is plenty of space between the lens and the grip. This form factor makes it ideal for gimbal and drone use. It is light enough even for subcompact gimbals such as Zion Crane M3S. The build quality is definitely not compromised either. The construction is fully metal except for the carbon fiber furniture in the front part. There are no plastic parts. The machining is excellent and it feels like a very premium and very sturdy piece of equipment. I can only give it a full score for the build quality. It is not weather sealed, so there is no gasket around the mount. There are no electronic contacts on the mount either, which means that this is indeed a fully manual lens. It uses a normal 62mm filter thread and you can use it with normal filters that you use for your non-anamorphic lenses. The position and the behavior of the control elements is the same on all three Saturn series lenses. The focusing ring is extremely smooth. There is quite a lot of resistance, which is a good thing in this case, because the throw or angle is relatively short at 120 degrees, which is what I actually like. The aperture ring is also very smooth with relatively high resistance, which is again a good thing for the same reason. There are no aperture clicks of course, which is an obvious choice for video or cine lens. To properly assess the optical qualities, I have tested this lens by taking stills on my testing scene. This time I am testing it with a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, which is basically 6K. The central sharpness is actually perfect right from T2.9. It has no issues rendering 6K in the middle of the frame whatsoever. The contrast is great and there is no chromatic aberration. You will actually get this image quality at any aperture from T2.9 to T11. That is quite remarkable, I have to say. There isn't even any distortion at T11. I had some issues with focusing in the corners because the magnification on the S5 II doesn't work in the very corners. I was able to get very solid image quality at T2.9, but not as good as in the center. Again, this might be misfocused. T4 already looks very solid with good amount of detail. T5.6 and T8 look basically perfect. Overall, I am very happy with the optical qualities. Anamorphic lenses are usually softer than rectilinear counterparts, but this would be a very good result even if it was a rectilinear lens. The real world footage matches this testing scene and I can confidently say that this lens is more than good enough for 6K video. 1.6x ratio is in my opinion the best compromise for consumerish anamorphic lenses. You are getting a pretty strong anamorphic effect consisting of the wide aspect ratio, oval bokeh and horizontal flares. 
One of the compromises with anamorphic lenses is often the minimum focus distance and that is also the case here. The minimum focus distance is 90 cm, same as with 35 and 75 mm versions. As I've said in the beginning, this lens is primarily meant for wide opening shots, so it shouldn't be that big of an issue. If you want to use it for subjects closer to the lens, you will need to use a diopter. Another typical feature of anamorphic lenses is the horizontal lens flare. You will also get that, but the Saturn series is not extremely prone to flaring, which is what I actually prefer. You can choose between natural lens flare or blue flare. Most people will probably go for a neutral flare, but I always go with the blue one because I really like that stereotypical 80s look. You will get some subject separation at T2.9. It is basically a wide angle lens, so it won't knock out the background, but the rendition of the bokeh is really nice. You will also get those oval bokeh balls, which is another signature feature of anamorphic video. A specific element of anamorphic filmmaking is warping at the edges of the frame. It is not that big of an issue with this one in comparison to the 35mm version, but you still need to be careful if you are close to some objects with straight lines. Some focus breathing is visible. It is not particularly bad and I don't think that many people will use this lens for focus pulling, but it is something to keep in mind. As you can probably tell, I like this lens a lot, but what I like even more is the combination of 50mm Saturn and Panasonic S52X. First of all, it allows you to shoot open gate 3x2 6K video, which gives you 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio after de-squeezing. This aspect ratio is in my opinion more all-round usable than 1 to 2.84 that you will get when shooting 16x9. The S52 has an anamorphic display mode, which gives you a preview of the footage after the de-squeezing process. There is no 1.6x option though. The closest is 1.5x, but that is good enough. The third feature is anamorphic mode for in-body image stabilization. That helps a lot at this focal length. It is more than good enough for static shots, panning, pointing the camera around, and that sort of stuff. Much like with the anamorphic display mode, only 1.5x settings is available. I don't know how much of a difference would 1.6x setting make, but this is definitely good enough. To sum up, 50mm Saturn is another great, semi-affordable anamorphic lens from Surrey. Much like with the other two Saturn series lenses, the size to performance ratio is the main highlight. It offers excellent optical qualities that definitely go beyond 6K requirements in a 10.7cm long lens weighing 457 grams. That was unheard of just a couple of years ago. It offers all of desirable anamorphic features such as wide aspect ratio, oval bokeh or horizontal lens flare. The build quality is outstanding, but it is not weather sealed, so keep it dry. Other than that, I can't really complain about anything, especially in combination with the S52X. You are getting 6K, an option to shoot 2.4 to 1, D-squeeze display and anamorphic stabilization with the S52 and S52X. While the 50mm Saturn and the S52 offer all of that at a very reasonable price point by anamorphic standards. Surrey Saturn 50mm T2.9 1.6x anamorphic is a very impressive piece of anamorphic gear and I highly recommend it. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you have found it to be useful, stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content, I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down, if you would like to ask anything or share your opinion please do so in the comment section, and see you next time.